you welcome back thanks for clicking so we are going to be watching how check amedida teaches dr zaki neck about islam so let's check it out cooperate with you he's trained he doesn't follow your instructions so he smells the rat the shit he wants to change the subject so i watch wrong isn't that the book of god he said yes i want to hear you read Give me, give me. So he gives it to you, and you read it. Don't be shy. If there are women that don't care a damn, this is the book they want to push it down your throat. They want to steal your iman. You have a right now to give the laser treatment, radium treatment. Huh? So you read it. Daughters having sex with the father and becoming pregnant. Two of the daughters of a prophet of God, Luth alayhi salam. We believe that all the prophets are masoom, sinless. They say that this prophet of God, after God saved him from Sodom and Gomorrah, he goes and commits incest with his daughters and he makes his daughters pregnant. What's the moral? We are asking. What is the moral? Ask the Christian. What is the moral? What is the lesson? Because any story you tell, children, fables, fairy tales, there is a moral behind it. What's the moral behind it? Come, come, I want to know. What is the moral? What lesson your daughters learn from this? Your sisters, what do they learn from this? Can you read this to your mother? Can you read to your daughter? About daughters having sex with their father. Getting him drunk and seducing him. So if there is no moral, then it's immoral. Well, I'm busy now. If there's no moral, then it's immoral. No moral, you're just telling a story about sexology, pornography. If there's no moral, then it is immoral in the book of God. Right. At the bottom of these two pages, write, son rapes his mother. At the bottom of the two pages, right across. Son rapes his mother. Trying to understand what they are. Son rapes his mother. I put down P32. P means full stop. P full stop. 32 means page 32. So now you see easy to find. Next one. Page 32. Open page 32. Page 32. Page 32. Right on the top, across the two pages, right. Son rapes his mother. What is this? Son rapes his mother. And verse 22 on page 32. You see that on page 32 you find verse 22. Frame it. Box it. Frame it. Box it. Don't worry about your lines. Just frame it. Box it. Right. Make the guys to read. 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 Exactly. <coughs> and it came to pass when Israel dwelt in that land that Reuben went and lay with Bilha, his father's concubine. And Israel heard it. Right. Who is Israel? Who is Israel? I'm asking you, who is Israel? Uh, uh, Jacob. Huh? Hazrat mm. Jacob alayhi salam. Uh, when you talk Jacob. to your class, you say, who is Israel? Say, Hazrat Jacob alayhi salam. He used to speak with respect. Hazrat Jacob alayhi salam. When he dwelt in that land, what land? Palestine. In that land. That Reuben, his eldest son, he went and slept, had sex, with Bilha, his father's wife, concubine. And Israel heard it. People told him, say, you know, your son, he screwed your wife. And he didn't lose his temper. He didn't spank him. He didn't scold him. And God Almighty didn't give him eight syphilis or gonorrhea. Nothing. That's all. The man didn't react. Nothing. There's not one word. That In the context, that's all. It's verse 22 starts and ends. And the subject changes. 
Before it there's no connection, after that there's no connection. By itself now. When Israel dwelt in the land, his eldest son, built Reuben, he went and had sex with his father's wife. So some clever guys will say, you see, this is concubine. You don't go into all the details. It's all the concubine. It's not his wife, not his mother. I said, your father's wife is your mother. He said, no, he's a concubine. You know, like a mistress. I said, look, man. Concubine and wife mean the same thing. He says, no, 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 no. You see, it's concubine. It's not as serious with your own mother. It's not your father's wife. It's your father's mistress. So for that we have an answer. In your combat kit. Open your combat kit. Combat kit. You find there number 24. Ketura. 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 Open Ketura. Page 23. Page 23. Page 23. Ketura. The first one there. Right on. Then again Abraham took a wife and her name was Ketura. Right? Ketura is his wife. W-I-F-E. Wife. Who says that? God tells to Moses. You say Genesis is the book of Moses, right? So God told Moses to write that Abraham took a third wife and her name was Ketura. What was she? His wife. wife. Hmm? Then, you see there in the black writing, you see there, Ketura being the wife of Abraham is being contradicted in the self-same word of God. That is, 1 Chronicles chapter 1 verse 32, where Ketura is described as Abraham's concubine. Same God is inspiring Moses to say, she is the wife of Abraham. Maybe God didn't know the difference between concubine and, and wife. He inspires the guy who was the unknown author of Chronicles that she was his concubine. So it's a contradiction. This God didn't know the difference. He's confusing the people, telling one guy it's his wife, another guy this is his concubine. If it means the same thing, it's okay. But if it means different thing, then this God of yours, he didn't know the difference between a wife and a concubine. Do you accept that? Would you accept that? That your God didn't know the difference. He's telling one guy to say he it was his wife and tells another guy to write. Dictates to another guy to say write his concubine. Unless they mean the same thing. So now that slaughters him. You see? So if he says yes, that means a contradiction in the Bible. You accept that? That means it's not the word of God. Head Either way, you get him right. Head so page thirty two. Again, page thirty two. We go to page thirty two. That's why you love for praying. Right. So, mm, at the bottom of these two pages, right, sex between father-in-law and daughter-in-law. Sex between father-in-law and daughter-in-law. father-in-law and daughter-in-law. Put down. P35. P35. What I can actually learn, the lesson I got from this particular video is that you have to start small. For you to get there. See how Dr. Zach Naik started in Islamic faith. He didn't really know much about Islam in the beginning. Sheikh Ahmedidat, the late Sheikh Ahmedidat was his mentor, was his teacher. So he goes to his office to learn. And I love his, his method of teaching. He will tell you, oh, on the like this, write this. Okay, you have to speak with authority, you give them proof, you do this, you say that. And, you know, they just took some chapters in the Quran and spoke about it, about Abraham. I thought Abraham's concubine, oh, well, 
they spoke about Abraham, they spoke about you know a lot of things, you know. One part that got to me when he said concubine is the same thing as wife. It's kind of shocking. I don't think a concubine can be wife. Wife, that's why they call it concubine. If it was wife, why did they say oh step <laughs> I wanted to say step wife? Is there step wife? Oh god. But I really love the teaching. I love it. It was beautiful. The fact that he was not distracted. Somebody came to meet uh, Sheikh Ahmed and he told him I'm busy. You know, he gave him the time. He's teaching him gradually. There are some things he asked Dr. Zach like he didn't know the answer. But he was settling them. He was jotting down. He was paying attention. So, nobody knows it all. If Dr. Zach Knight could start from scratch, that is to say, there's nobody that cannot succeed in this life. You need to start from scratch. You need to have a mentor. Everybody must have a mentor in this life. Whatever field you find yourself, have a mentor. Have somebody that you look up to. Have somebody that you you know the person is um has gone ahead of you and is better. Take that person as a mentor. If you cannot get, get the person physically to mentor you, you can read about them. You can study them positively, good things about them. Some people, they learn negative things from mentors, but learn positive things. And this was a beautiful study. I really enjoyed it, even though at some point I was confused on what he was saying about the, the marriage, the sexual, the this. I don't know what that whole story is all about. The only time I got to understand was the Abraham later. But what I wanted to get, I've gotten it. The fact that I mean, that speaks with authority. It speaks to somebody that knows, has the knowledge, knows the knowledge, and he imparted into Dr. Zaki Knight. And you can see now, now Dr. Zaki Knight is a great Muslim scholar that's, you know, lectured to millions of people. Millions of people. And with confidence that, you know, you can see that all the training he went through all the teachings i mean did that taught him was never in vain and that was beautiful to watch so that's a wrap guys thank you don't forget to smash that subscribe button turn on that notification bell for more like share and comment and let me know your thoughts in the comment box let's keep the discussion going i'll see you guys in the next one